Kirito's reasoning for being in the virtual realm of the underworld is revealed, and it might not come across as a shock, but it involves some shady government experiments. Get ready to go diving, my friends. It's time to take a look at another two episodes of Sword Art Online Alicization. That's right, you're getting two reviews in this episode, and that's because I was too lazy to watch last week's episode, but I'm really glad that I watched both of these together as they sort of encompass this little mini arc that is going to be explaining everything that's going on with Kirito, how he survived his encounter with Johnny Black, and how he's involved with this crazy experiment which has been concocted by Colonel Kikuoka. Yes, that's right, Kikuoka is actually working for the government and he's had this grand dream of being able to create a virtual world where they can quite literally raise cloned souls. What's the purpose of this? So that they can create an AI which has the ability to murder someone. They're quite literally creating a farm for assassins. If you can wrap your head around that ridiculousness, I think you're actually going to enjoy both of these episodes. What is interesting, however, is that as soon as Kirito and Yu-Gi-Oh were getting ready to go on their grand adventure through the underworld, we immediately hard cut back to the real world where things are cold and sterile, but at least Asuna's around. Did I mention I have an unhealthy obsession with Asuna? Asuna is able to get together with her friends in the virtual world, and they come up with a plan to try and find Kirito. And a lot of this is thanks to her virtual daughter, Yui, who is able to pinpoint the exact locations of where Kirito could possibly be. They know a couple of things. They know that he's been taken in by Wrath, and that it's going to involve some crazy technology with cloning and using souls. But how is that actually going to end up helping them find him? They know that they're going to have to have another means of actually getting to these people, and, and the way that they're actually going to do this is through the the former lover of Kayaba, yes, the villain from the very first part of Sword Art Online. This woman who apparently knows all of his secrets and even worked with him directly, and apparently according to her, the reason that this was was because she had a bomb implanted in her chest, which may or may not still be there. That's kind of freaking me out. I have a feeling she's gonna like explode any minute. She kind of wants to atone for all of the things that she did with helping Kayaba in his crazy plan to trap people in a virtual world, and she does so by actually helping out Asuna and bringing her to the Wrath base, which is the turtle. That's what they call it. And it actually has the head of a cow, at least according to them, which again is going with the whole theme of the Mock Turtle, Alice in Wonderland themes. For me, the highlight of Episode 6 is the fact that Asuna is actually in costume when she sneaks into this underground Wrath base, and when she reveals herself to Kikuoka, it's actually a really awesome scene. What I love too is that it is implied that she's like an American, she has an American accent, and it actually sounds pretty convincing, which I thought was great. But I have to admit, this was a really cool moment for her character when she revealed herself at the very end, but Kikuoka ends up playing this off real cool and we find out why in episode 7. Episode 7 is just an avalanche of exposition. It pretty much explains everything that we need to know for the show, and yet I still don't know if I can trust Kikuoka here. His, his grand plan, as I said earlier, is to try and create these artificial souls, which are AIs which they can use to murder people for military purposes. At least that's what Asuna calls him out on, and he doesn't really seem to deny any of this, but Kirito is going to be absolutely instrumental into actually making this happen, because the thing is, even though they've actually created this world where these Real virtual lives are, these people cannot commit any crimes. They don't kill anybody, there's no murdering, there's no crime. However, within this world, there is this military and almost religious regime which has existed known as the Axiom Church, which is the one that sort of takes over everything. And they're all completely under their rule, but at the same time, they're not fully human in the sense that they're not willing to go that far and do terrible things. I know that sounds kind of weird actually saying that out loud, it almost seems like a good thing, but for the purpose of this being a military program to create killer AI, it's not the result that they want. And that's why Kirito has actually been brought into this world, to sort of show these people what it truly means to be human. Since he's actually experienced so much time in these VR MMO worlds, he seems like the perfect candidate for that, and the fact that he's in a convenient coma kind of works out here. He actually did survive against Johnny Black, but he is having some bad neural problems up top, and thus he has to go into this machine, which eventually should be able to resuscitate him. 
Also, his sexy nurse returns, and I'm completely okay with that. The episode ends with Rinko actually apologizing to Asuna for working along with Kayaba and trapping them in SAO, but Asuna seems okay with this. Even though it might seem kind of selfish, this is where she met Kirito. This is where she fell in love, and she actually considers it some of the best days of her life. This allows Rinko to relax a little bit more until she gets some weird, creepy visions of Kayaba. Is he alive? Is he not really alive? Does his soul seem to exist in this world? I don't know. They're just trying to fuck with our heads at this point. What's the rundown of both of these episodes of Sword art online there was a lot of information in both of these episodes and while it might be just absolutely mired in techno jargon it's actually pretty simple for everything that's going on it is also great that we finally get to see the old cast return and actually do something active and interesting actually getting to see them all interact is great because we don't get to see too much of that too often especially considering most of the series has just been the kirito show and while i have no problem with that i was getting used to all of the brand new characters in the underworld so it was a little jarring when we finally went back to the real world World and haven't seen anything that's been going on with Kirito and Yu-Gi-Oh's journey. Yet they still managed to make both of these episodes very strong experiences, especially when it came to explaining what's truly going on here and what really is at stake at the moment. As for Kikuoka, I don't know if this guy actually has good intentions. Asuna, like I said, called him out on the fact that he's trying to create an AI that can murder people, and that doesn't exactly seem like good intentions. How are they actually going to apply this anyway? Are they going to insert these souls into fucking Terminator? robots? I don't know. How are they going to kill people digitally? It's something that the world of SAO has been slowly building up to, and uh, really I can understand why this Alisation arc has been considered so epic amongst the fan base. It truly is opening things back up. But I will say is, it's great for there to be high stakes in the series yet again. That's not to say that I think the series can work without them. I even loved the spin-off of Gun Gale Online, but seeing it actually return to form like this and start to feel a little more serious, kind of like the very first season, just really sort of amplifies everything. And technically speaking, the show continues to look fucking awesome. I mean, if the character design wasn't amazing, it's the overall atmosphere and look of everything. I also just want to go ahead and say that I think my favorite scene of both of these episodes, and one that I thought was highly disturbing, was when one of the scientists, Higo, was actually explaining how this experiment works with how they're able to sort of clone people's souls. He quite literally clones his very own soul, which is basically his consciousness, which is at the same exact age and has the same exact experiences, except that it doesn't have a physical form and it's trapped in this like weird digital computer world and it desperately wants to escape. It doesn't want to be considered the clone, and it doesn't want to be eliminated. It's horrifying that it actually has that much free will, and the entire scene, honestly, is one of the creepiest things that I've actually seen from the franchise. That's where they learn that in order to properly control these AI and make them the way that they want them to, they have to literally create them in this world when they're babies and watch them age. But of course, everything in the underworld moves at a uh, much faster pace, and that's reflected in the fact that, uh, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! has aged so much since the last time Kirito saw him, which wasn't that long ago. Really, though, I'm ready to get back into the underworld and see what that entire story is actually going to entail. Having both of these stories run concurrently with one another really it feels like two different series at the same time, and in many ways, I think that's really great. And considering this is supposed to be like the longest arc in the series, color me pumped. I loved both. Both of these episodes, I thought they were really good, playing to some of the biggest strengths of SAO, which is why I'm going to give both episodes a 5 out of 5. If you were even a casual fan of this franchise, you have got to check out this season. If any of you did watch the episode, I'd love to hear your thoughts about them. You can tell me all about it in the comment section below, what you liked, what you didn't like, favorite moments, favorite characters, and what you hope to see from the rest of this season. Thank you guys for watching this review. I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay... Down there, baby.